We know how to differentiate a function like x squared with respect to x. So say for instance, the derivative of x cubed with respect to x is nothing just three times x to the three minus one or three x squared. And similarly, an easier one might be the derivative with respect to x with respect to x of x squared and this we know is equal to just 2x. Now what might be a bit difficult to figure out is the derivative of x to the power of 3 halves. Now notice this is not a positive integer, this 3 halves is a rational number and thus the goal of this video will be to differentiate rational powers that look like 3 halves. So let's get right into it. So imagine, imagine just setting up some variables. So we will have, we will have y equals x to the three halves. Now, once we have set up this, there is no way we can just put d over dx both sides since that's just not something that we know. Instead, what we can do is to simplify things a bit we can square both sides and the reason why we are trying to square both sides is that the power involved here three halves has a two in its denominator so if i do squared both sides the right hand side will just have these twos cancel out remember the powers will multiply and on the left hand side we will have y squared so this function this explicit function that we had y, y equals x to the power of three halves converts into an implicit definition which is y squared equals x cubed this is now a bit more doable problem than the one we had before now what we can do is we can slam upon this a d over dx on both sides so d over dx of y squared is equal to d over dx of x cubed we know what this side is this is just equal to 3x squared what about the left hand side in the left hand side we have d over dx of y squared we can write this using the chain rule, and that's something I hope you have understood by now, as d over dy of y squared times dy over dx. Remember, we can think of it like canceling the dy's, even though that's not the most accurate representation. But anyways, this gives us the derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y, and there is a dy over dx term here, so we'll just write it again. We have the left-hand side, we have the right-hand side. Both of these are equal, so let's just go on and write that. So we have 2y dy over dx is equal to 3x squared. That gives us dy over dx is equal to 3x squared divided by 2y. Now, this problem is solved except for the fact that the function was explicitly given in terms of x so it might be nice if we just give the answer in terms of x as well and that's pretty easy let's just substitute in instead of y its actual function x to the power of three halves this will just give you three halves times x to the power of two minus three halves or or the derivative would be equal to 3 halves times x to the power of 1 by 2. And that's it. That's how we can find the derivative of x to the power of 3 by 2. But what's peculiar about this is that this follows sort of the same trend as we saw in positive integers. Namely, we had the power being brought over to the other side and we subtracted one off it. If you look here, 3 over 2 comes off to the left hand side of the x term and in the in the power I subtracted 1 3 halves minus 1 is equal to 1 half so can we make a theorem out of it let's look at that so we want to prove that in general the derivative with respect to x of x to the power of p over q 
uh, the reason why we are using peer queue is that it gives us a nice enough representation for all rational numbers. This is equal to p over q times x to the p over q minus 1. And that just follows the same rule as we had before, except instead of just having a single positive integer, we have a rational number that, that encompasses more numbers than before. So let's try proving this. Uh, the way we will approach this is uh, quite similar to what we did in the previous example. So let's write y equals x to the power of p over q. Now let's try to remove this q over from here. And remember, q cannot be equal to zero, otherwise nothing would make sense. Uh, infinite power does not make any sense for a well-defined function. So firstly, let's put this power q on both sides. The, doing that will give us y to the power of q is equal to x to the power of p. Now, let's differentiate with respect to x. So d over dx of y to the power of q is equal to d over dx of x to the power of p. Doing this will get you the right-hand side pretty easily. Since we know that p and q are just integers, we can comfortably write that this is p times x to the power of p minus 1. On to the left-hand side now, and in, in the same strategy like we had before, we will just use the chain rule. So we will have d over dy, this is just equal to d over dy of y to the power of q times dy over dx. We know that since q is an integer, we can write this as q times y to the power of q minus 1 times dy over dx still continues. This is the left-hand side, and this is the right-hand side. Both of these are equal, but let's just keep it that way. This will simply give us dy over dx times q times y to the power of q minus 1 is equal to p times x to the power of p minus 1. And you just bring everything to one side, and this will give you d over, dy over dx is equal to p over q times x to the p minus 1 over y to the q minus 1. Now remember that we started with the definition that y equals x to the power of p over q, and it would be nice to give a, the derivative in just in terms of x. So let's just plug this value. Let's take this value and plug it in right here. This will get you the derivative as p over q just remains the same. x to the power of p minus 1 remains the same. In the denominator, now you have x to the power of p over q times q minus, to the power of q minus 1. And remember, remember that these powers will get multiplied. So you will have p over q times x to the p minus 1 divided by x to the power of p over q times q minus 1. This is a bit of an algebra to work with, so I'll just do it on this side. So p over q times q minus 1 is equal to p over q times q minus, minus p over q. These q's will cancel out, so you will have p minus p over q. So this will give us, this will give us, instead of this entire expression right here, we just found that this is just equal to p minus p over q. So p minus p minus p over q. Now, in the end, since two powers of x are being divided, we can simply just subtract them to get a final answer. So this will be p over q times x to the p minus 1 minus p minus p over q. And I know the algebra is getting a bit messy, but anyways, we are quite near to what we want to prove. These p's will get cancelled out, and you have a negative and negative sign right here, so this will just give you a positive p over q, and then a minus 1 right here. So in the end, you have d over dx, dy over dx, is equal to p over q times x to the power of p over q minus 1. 
remember this is the derivative of y equals x to the power of p over q and this simply just extends our definition of the power rule from just integers or just positive integers to a wide set of numbers called irrational numbers again it might be possible that the derivative may not be defined all across the board just like we took the derivative of 1 over x it was not defined all across the board we will look at how we can use these derivatives in the future videos see you in the next one